Hello, and I welcome everybody to the App Support Group's presentation. Okay, so the title for our presentation is Open 24 7 365. So, you guys might have guessed why we are calling this, why we are using this as the title, but down the presentation you will understand. So, these are the, these are the content that we will be covering. We will be talking about purposeful business, then big problem, bigger solution, and a better tomorrow. So let's talk about purposeful business. Why does someone start a restaurant? So let's let's take Sachi. She she can cook really good rice and curry, and she loves to cook. Okay, so she decides. So she's not working for Kate. Okay, <laughs> so she decides. Okay, I want to put up a restaurant. And I want to couple my passion with earning money, with earning a living. So she goes around the restaurants, looks for how to start a new restaurant, looks for tools, looks for staff, looks for a place, and she opens up a restaurant. She knows how to cook, but she doesn't know how to run a business, right? So she starts a restaurant, and it goes on for a few days, a week or two, and then she runs into some big problems. She doesn't know her employees who are coming in and out. She has problems with her payroll. She has problems tracking her cash, card payments. So, and she, doesn't, she can't get data. So she's doing it manually, but she can't get the proper data to predict her sales, to plan her sales in the future. So she goes really low on business. She loses customers, and she's about to close down. So what she needs here is a system that will help her manage the restaurant. So this is where I think that cake is an appropriate product that she should get. What's in it for cake? So why, I mean, why should we worry about this? So if you look at these statistics, these are statistics that we actually, all of us should be knowing as a restaurant solutions company. So we, so in, in the United States of America, there are 130 million people who eat out per day on an average. So that's 40% of the entire population of America. And then you got one million, they, they have one million restaurant locations in the US. So that, so for Cake has sold our solution, sold our, sold our restaurant solution to about 1,500 plus restaurants. That's like 0.15% of this. And then in US, this is according to the National Restaurant Association, the revenue per day is 1.9 billion. The restaurant industry makes 1.9 billion dollars per day. So that is, in the year 2015, the statistics said that they have made 709.2 billion dollars in that year, in 2015. So this is on an average, on an average year, it's about 600 odd billion dollars. And again, it's open 24 seven, 365. So the restaurant industry is open every day, every hour, every day, the restaurant industry. So they are making money every single day, every hour. So Cake identified this industry as an amazing industry where they're one of the biggest revenue making industries in the US. So we put our hands in there to get ourselves attached and make revenue through their revenue. So what we did here is we joined the restaurant industry and we started making revenue. So as a company that's in, in hands with a, such a big revenue making industry, we have to come to a really high level. We have to come above market level, especially because cake is attempting or working to become the, one of the best restaurant solutions company in the US. Uh, moving on, so why should we care about our customers? Why should we really support them? Why should we care about them? So one reason is our service is not free. So if we were giving us free service, we could have just told them, you know, fix it yourself, try to find a solution yourself, and to, told them to go away. But uh, so if you can just, if you just take an example, if you go to a shop, you pay a lot of money to buy a product 
and something's wrong with the product, something's missing with it, right? So you get really angry. You go back to the shop and you're like, I paid for this, but I don't have the proper money, uh, sorry, the value for what I paid, right? So this is one reason we should really care about our restaurants, our customers, because they are paying us every month to give them a service. And also, they depend on Cake, because Cake is the restaurant solutions company that is managing their entire business. Not entirely, but most of their business. So they really, really depend on us. So we need to make sure that our service is top level. The next one is we need to build trust, right? So as a restaurant solutions company, again, competing with the best restaurant solutions companies around, so we need to build our trust. So restaurants need to look at Cake as a company that they can trust to go to for restaurant solutions. The next thing is we need them. We need our customers. Only if we keep our customers with us, the, the customers, the existing customers, if we keep them with us, then only we will be able to attract more customers. And in any industry in the world, if, you, if your customer is happy, your business is good. You get more customers and your business is good. So at the end of the day, it goes down to the last thing, it's money. So if we need the money to keep coming in, we need to make sure that our service level is top, that we have a high service level and provide good support for our product that we're giving them. So this diagram kind of depicts what I was talking about. If we are strong in our base and if we have protected our base, then we will attract customers and in turn our revenue will be high. So let's talk about two problems that we need to counter, two big problems that we need to counter to come to a high service level, a high support level. One of it is time. So let's take an example. So now Sachi has opened up a restaurant. She has bought cake. And she's walking into a restaurant at 8 o'clock in the morning with her staff. Her staff is getting the place ready, getting the food ready. And the restaurant opens at 9. So she walks into the post to clock in and to cash in. And she finds that there's something wrong with the post. There's an error message. It's not loading. So she, what she does is she tries a bit of troubleshooting. She tries to restart. She does a few restarts, fiddles with the network, but nothing going. It's not coming up. The post is not coming up, right? So 10 minutes down the line, so there's 50 minutes more for the restaurant to open. So she calls Cake. She calls Cake Support. Cake Support answers, and they do their bit of troubleshooting by checking the post, running system diagnostic on the post. They take about 10 minutes to troubleshoot the issue and no go, so they, through Slack, they communicate to App Support and be like, hey, we got a problem. There's a restaurant opening in, let's say, another 40 minutes. So Apple's, App Support does their troubleshooting now. So they start troubleshooting, they do a few restarts to try and fix the problem, nothing happening. So let's say that took another 10 minutes or 15 minutes, so there's about 25 minutes remaining. So now it's in the morning PST, night in Sri Lanka. So the next step they, the next step they take is to call up production support and wake someone up. They wake someone up, he gets up. So it takes about 10 or 15 minutes for him to wake up and obviously to find his laptop, put it on, get connected to the internet, and then start working on the problem. So it's natural, right? So he takes some time. He, he, so next step is he takes time to look for the issue. First, he, he needs to be the issue needs to be communicated to him. Then he needs to look for the problem. He needs to find where the problem is. He needs to fix the problem. So when, all, when, we, when they go through all this, as in when the solution takes so long, the restaurant has already opened, and they keep calling support to ask, hey, we're, we're going to open now. What, what's happening? And they, they have nothing to do with the pass. I mean, they, there's nothing they can do with the pass. So they go on manual. So they start taking orders on paper. They can't run credit cards, so they just take cash. So they lose customers. It's a big problem. They lose business. Now let's go into another problem. So now let's say production support fixed that problem, OK? And Sachi is really happy now. And she's doing sales once again, selling rice and curry. And <laughs> once, one day, one fine day, a customer comes up, buys a packet of rice and curry, and 
pays by credit card. She swipes the credit card, and the customer is supposed to sign. So they're waiting. But the customer can't sign because there's something wrong with the touch system. The CTD is not responding. So then Sachi is now frustrated again. She calls cake support. Look, my CTD is not working. She's embarrassed because the customer is waiting there to sign the credit card slip, uh, sign on the CTD. So it doesn't work. A few restarts fixes the problem. But this keeps happening over and over again. So the problem here is knowledge. So this issue went to app, goes to app support, goes to production support. They can't find the real root cause behind the problem because, uh, because it's a really tough thing. It's a hard, it, it may be a hardware problem, maybe a software problem. So they don't really have the knowledge to find, get down to the root cause of the problem. And also a restart just fixes the problem. So that's another big problem that we have to counter to become the best service team or best support team. So let's talk about the bigger solution now. <coughs> so the solution to any problem which comes to cake goes through three tiers. So in such a calls, customer support, it may be in US or Sri Lanka. We, the, the Sri Lankan team also handles tier one, answer the phone, do, do their troubleshooting. If they can't fix the problem, they communicate it to the tier two. That's application support. If they can't fix it, they communicate it to the tier three. So that's how the solution goes through the three tiers. So I'm gonna call upon Dulan to take you through tier one. Thank you. Like, like Ashan said before, the uh, customer support is a crucial element of business to success. So, uh, tier one is all about customer handling. So, let's see, let's see how it does. Both our US and SL team uh, share the same rules and standards. So, the customer can see as one team, so they can easily deal with. So, also we do proactive monitoring. So we can identify and fix the issue before customer complains it. So also we know that customer, also we know that knowledge sharing is between the teams. So the team members can be on the same standard, same standard. So, so they can handle the customers better than before. So. These are the type of customer tier one handles. The talkative customer is friendly, but they they not they move on. The talkative customer is the most friendly one. They they stop, they usually stop refusing to stop talking because they even after they express the problem, and so the conversation can be moved from something irrelevant to uh, non-relevant to relevant to non-relevant so we have to be focused focus on what the actual problem is so we can deal with it so the next one is a suspicious customer the suspicious customer believes the doubts and doubts of belief so he's the he's really hard to convince so he's the one who never he never trusts anyone so we have to ensure that we we have to ensure them that we know the product and service very well so we have to build their trust so to deal with these type of customers so the know it all customer is a customer who knows everything about anything so they are unwilling to listen to others so we have to ensure so we have to ensure that he we have to encourage them uh, we have to like encourage them on what they what they research about the issues so they are the one who provide the issues and the solution to us. So, uh, like, likewise, they provide the issues and 
also give their solution. So we have to be careful with it. So we need to tackle him and get the uh, actual problem. So this one is an indecisive customer. The person, who, person can never make a decision alone. So he always depends on someone else's decision. So we have to, we have to, we have to help with them to how to select the select what they want really want, and to deal with it. So the next one is angry customer is a real difficult to handle one. So these, so we have to be a lot of patient to handle these type of customers. So this is the example to Greg, the angry customers who is furious about the timesheet issues we had. So let's see how tier one handles Greg's problem. So first we need to be calm and listen to Greg's problem. So, so we have to extract what the actual issue is. So secondly, we need to uh, express the empathy to Greg. So that will create a bond with him. So that we know we, that he knows that we heard the issue and we are working to resolve it. So, the, so thirdly, we need to find a solution for this. So don't make promises that unless we can make it. So in this, in this case, it is a technical issue where, where tier, one can, tier one cannot proceed with because they, have, they doesn't have the knowledge to proceed with. So tier one escalate this to a tier two applicant support to further troubleshoot this. So uh, let's see what happened to Greg Ness. Uh, so I'll invite Harsha to present. Right. Thank you, Dulan. Uh, how awesome would it be to get one of Gordon Ramsay's restaurant for cake? Yeah, fingers crossed, huh? Right, um, moving on to what happens to Greg's problem after this. Um, at this point, Greg's uh, problem is, once the uh, Greg's problem is moved from support to app support, we do our uh, initial investigating on that. Initial investigating, we do carry out. Um, uh, we'll try to find, uh, we look at the logs, right? We try to find what the root, root cause is for this. Uh, let's say if it's a previously known issue, if it's a previously known issue we, uh, and a fix has been implemented already, we go ahead and fix uh, the problem right away. But if it's an unknown issue, um, so depending on that, we will uh, escalate uh, those issues to the production support team. So uh, by the issue type, we will uh, prioritize those issues uh, from critical to uh, non-critical. Um, so saying in this way, it's where we decide whether to wake you guys up uh, or else Sachi can fix it tomorrow. So, well, what, so then at that point, um, as a customer, Greg is really uh, furious at that, this point. Let's see. Uh, uh, everyone has hands-on experience with this timesheet uh, issue, right? Um, yeah, most of everyone here, right? So let's see, uh, Greg has to pay his employees. His employees has to pay their college fees, rent. Uh, imagine the pressure at Greg at this point. He will try to take, uh, take that pressure on us, but it's very uh, fairly, uh, it's very fair at, the, at this point from him. Well, so 72 hours. How can we reduce that? How, so this uh, given SLA, how can we re reduce that? How, how can we serve a, uh, provide a better solution to Greg in future? OK. Yeah. So how do we serve Greg better in future? So we introduce a concept called um, proactive versus reactive support. So where, what is proactive support? Proactive support is where you um, Monitor a device or where, where, where actually before the customer comes and complains about the issue, we go ahead and fix it. So reactive support, where actually customer complains about it and then we fix the issue. Right. So we are in a process of uh, developing our reactive support skills. 
So this reactive support skills, uh, skills include, uh, so now there are a couple of steps that we have taken. One step is exposure to customers. Uh, we have our individual goes, goes to US, they visit on site and they conduct an interview uh, with the operator and uh, uh, get the hands-on experience with the operator and see what are the issues that you're facing and even uh, in Sri Lanka, we go to restaurants and see, uh, talk to the customers and see uh, what are the issues that you are facing. And so, and the, uh, the other part is where we improved our technical implement, in, implementation knowledge. We've been given researches, we, uh, indiv uh, us individuals do structural component uh, researches where, uh, for example, I'll give you a simple one, uh, cash in and cash out. So we go in depth and see uh, what are the issues that has been reported in past. We do our research and um, so th the other part is the technical component of this. Like let's see, uh, we'll take an example for CouchDB. We do our research and uh, see what we can do to improve. Um, so what are the benefits? Um, one benefit is obviously you guys can sleep in the night, right? So if you can go and fix the issue right away, right? You guys can actually work on the issue, find out um, what happened uh, tomorrow. But if a customer can perform his day-to-day uh, -day operations smoothly at that time and we fixed it, that uh, would be much better. So the other benefit is imagine uh, if he could get back to Greg at that time uh, right away, right? Uh, he would have been uh, um, not happy actually because he, all, uh, he had an issue. But he would have been more satisfied going back to him after 72 hours. Okay, so right now I'm going to talk about uh, proactive support. Where proactive support comes in handy. So the only proactive things we did in past is where, let, let's imagine in a testing cycle, we understand uh, there's a bug in this. So we deploy a patch to fix this bug before the operator comes in. But uh, that's the only proactive part we have done in the past. But with Pulse, uh, we actually uh, we can actually monitor the device, and before the operator even comes to the restaurant, if it's a critical issue, we have we have already fixed it. He doesn't even know about it. Um, uh, so I'll give you one uh, interesting example. So Pulse uh, lets you check the network infrastructure for this particular restaurant. Uh, we. Uh, I myself received a call that day saying, asking, uh, okay, um, my, sir, my printer is, printer is not working. I was like, okay. So my first understanding of the problem was, I was thinking, okay, there should be a network problem. So I made him trace down the cables. I checked the POS. It's, uh, I pinged the printer. Everything's working fine. And uh, even at this point, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit frustrated through uh, because I I have no clue how to fix this issue. So then I was thinking, okay, so as Shola Combs says, right, if uh, nothing is left, uh, no matter how improbable, it must be the cause. So I asked him, sir, um, do you have enough paper? He was like, how do I check that? Then I told him, uh, sir, is your printer beeping? He was like, yes. Okay, so the problem is you have run out of paper. So how did Pulse help me there? It shows me the diagram of the uh, infrastructure, and with that, it shows me what are the devices which is connected. So with the, for the cradle point, we had three printers and two devices connected. So I know there's nothing wrong with the pr printer itself it's, uh, with the other investigations on it. Um, so yes, the solution was I gave him dimensions. So you can go one of, uh, buy one of these uh, printer rolls. So that's one of the simple examples, but uh, let's see a uh, hard drive uh, with a bad sector. Um, we realized uh, earlier on, we realized we, you can actually, there's actually something wrong with this hard drive. We monitored that hard drive. If, if we do have to send a replacement before the customer complains with an issue, we go ahead and send a replacement. Okay. Um, the future of Pulse. And so there are, uh, the, Pulse is improving a lot. Um, so they are sending sprints every two weeks with new features. So us as uh, app support, as soon as we get to know an issue, we discuss with the Pulse team, how can we make Pulse better in future? Okay, so uh, the big plan, so the uh, a better tomorrow. Uh, our plan is to become uh, full stack operations engineers 
And over time, our main focus is to come to a level where we, are at, where we can work with the technical implementation as well. All right. So it's the end of our presentation. Um, is there any questions from the audience? Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you so much for coming, guys. I hope you enjoyed.